Hello and welcome to The General's Reviews. I'm Chris McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80 from the Full Force Podcast, and I'm joining Justin Bell from What's On Joe Mind and General's Joes to bring you this review of the G.I. Joe Collectors Club figure subscription service for Nunchuck. Before Justin takes a look at the figure, let's go into the history of the character from his first appearance through to now. The first version of the character was released by Hasbro in 1992 after appearances in the Marvel G.I. Joe comic and on the Deke cartoon show. His real name was Ralph Baducci, he was from Brooklyn, New York, and he was a member of the G.I. Joe sub-team Ninja Force. His primary specialty was self-defense instructor, and his secondary specialty was ordnance. He wore all green ninja garb with black camo striping, and had a black mask with a cloth hood, much like that of Dusty's version 1 helmet. In terms of accessories, it was slim pickings for this particular figure as he came with a figure stand, nunchucks and a sword. The structure of the figure was interesting as all of the Ninja Force had special action features built in. Nunchucks was a spring action samurai smash that allowed his right arm to be raised, then released, causing it to spring down in a chopping motion. The figure's articulation was hindered slightly by tabs that locked the waist into a fixed position. They helped the figure stay in place when using the spring action feature. These tabs were not on earlier releases. There have been five versions of Nunchuck over the years. One of the most interesting versions was the second incarnation of the figure. The Ninja Force were re-released as Shadow Ninjas in 1994 using the same moulds but different plastics. They each had several Inviso powers which made the plastic change colour when exposed to warm or cold water. The majority of Nunchuck was pink, apart from the head, belt, gloves, elbow joints and lower legs. The straps over his torso were also a darker colour. When exposed to warm water the entire figure changed to a white colour, apart from the hood, gloves, belt and lower legs, which remained black. To return the figure to its original pink colour, you simply used ice cold water. This version came with far more accessories than his predecessor, with a figure stand, sword, two knives, a machete, a sickle and a bow. In 2002, Nunchuck was redesigned drastically when he appeared in the G.I. Joe vs Cobra line in a two-pack with Firefly. The figure was worked into the new style of body and looked entirely different to his original form. This time the character's face was exposed as well as his torso, the straps were still there and the camo striping pattern on his skin was a homage to the original as was the hood. Parts of his feet were exposed which made him look more like an update to Quick Kick than it did to Nunchuck. The same mould was reused again when his deco was changed to black and grey for the Night Force in a two-pack with Crosshair in 2003 and again in a Costco Battle in a Box exclusive set in 2004. Both versions came with the Sound Attack submachine gun, rifle and three-piece chain nunchucks. The figure subscription service version Justin is looking at today is the fifth version of the figure and a direct homage to the original 1992 Ninja Force character. So without further ado, here is Justin with the review. This is Justin from GeneralsJoes.com and we're looking at a video review today for the figure subscription service by the G.I. Joe Collectors Club. Uh, Nunchuck, who's part of their first shipment of figure subscription service 4.0 figures. He was shipped along with Law & Order uh, on a single card, nice vintage style card. Uh, I already cracked him open, so I can't give you a card shot, unfortunately. But here is Nunchuck uh, out of the package and fully equipped. And he's a very cool, really good, really nice modern update to the classic figure. Um, not quite as accurate as some folks might have hoped, but he's a very good update. Got some great modern parts. Uh, the paint scheme is pretty much spot on. He's got some great accessories. There's lots of fun stuff to do here. Plus, he's a member of Ninja Force, and more Ninja Force is always great. Um, Chebang, I was very happy to get back in 2014. And uh, Nunchuck makes another great addition. We, of course, have the uh, Dollar General Storm Shadow um, to lead the Ninja Force as well. So we're starting to amass a nice little group of Ninja Force members. And Nunchuck was always one of my favorites when I was a kid. I think it was mostly because um, he was one of the few early release Ninja Force figures that wasn't drastically impacted by his play feature. His, his articulation was reduced, but it wasn't reduced to a horrible extent. Um, I love seeing these modern updates to Ninja Force just because that means um, they're actually more poseable than their vintage counterparts generally. Uh, you can see Nunchuck. Um, he uses mostly 30th Anniversary Storm Shadow parts. He's got different lower legs. Uh, I'm not sure precisely what lower legs those are, but they're more combat bootish than, um, than Storm Shadows are. 
And he's actually, you know, never mind. He's actually got different legs entirely. I think they're they might be uh, 30th anniversary airtight legs. And I know I'm going to get myself in big trouble when I try to identify parts because anybody who reads my my website knows that I am for some reason I am horrible at parts identification and I just assume things belong to certain things and they don't. So this might be an ongoing joke with these video reviews that I just consistently get parts combinations wrong. So you have to forgive me ahead of time. If you want to get the real real answer, go to yojo.com. You know, the guys, Phil Donnelly and Terry and, and Pat, those guys are much more devoted to accuracy than I am. I tend to fly off the seat of my pants, so apologize for that. But that's essentially what you get. I think it's 30th anniversary Storm Shadow from the waist up, uh, 30th anniversary Airtight from the waist down, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, but he comes with a bunch of different ninja-oriented accessories, most of which came with that Storm Shadow. He's got a great set of nunchucks, obviously, since he is nunchuck. He's got a pair of these Psy, which is cool. I love those. And I love that his um, he's got the, the hands from the 30th anniversary Renegade Storm Shadow, which means he can actually hold the Psy kind of between his fingers, um, like so, which is a really nice touch. Something that's very cool. That, that Storm Shadow, when it first came out, was so absolutely revolutionary to to how, how action figures of that scale were produced. He could hold his throwing stars, he could hold his his uh, side like that, he could hold one of these like little teeny tiny darts in a pouch that Nunchuck also comes with um, that connected to a little peg on the back of his Storm Shadow um, sash. Um, speaking of his back, he's got a nice little backpack with dual sword sheaths there with two swords inside, um, long one and a short one. Just like that, which is pretty cool. The backpack, of course, comes off. And you get a good look at the back there, too. There's a sash. There's a little tiny peg that a dart hooks into. Uh, turn him around, and his little hood helmet thing actually comes off, revealing a plain old ninja mask underneath. Um, it's okay. You know, the, the mask originally, I think, came with 25th Anniversary Training Storm Shadow, maybe? And was also, I think, released with Pursuit of Cobra, Temple Guardian, Snake Eyes. Sorry. Uh, I believe that's that's who this, this hood was released with. And it does an okay job of approximating Nunchuck's kind of uh, flowing headdress, I guess. You know, it's not perfect, but it does all right. And, I mean, they do, it does a good job of, you know, being a modern update to everybody's favorite, you know, vintage Nunchuck, you know, with the same kind of camouflage and the same shades of green and the... Wait a minute. That's not Vintage Nunchuck. It should be. This is Spy Troop, or Joe versus Cobra Nunchuck. That's that's the Nunchuck everybody loves. Put him shirtless, green paint everywhere, bare feet. He's awesome. All right, never mind. That's not the Nunchuck this is based on. This is based on the Ninja Force Nunchuck, which anybody who looked at my FSS 4.0 Law review will tell you that I mentioned my vintage figures are disintegrated before my eyes, and Nunchuck is no exception. Um, his is a simple O-ring break, but unfortunately when it comes to Ninja Force, O-ring breaks can be fatal because uh, he doesn't have a screw hole in his back, but I've, you know, he's, he's kind of holding together there. As you can see, the greens don't quite match up. The Collector's Club likes to mute their colors just a little bit uh, when necessary, so the green on the modern version of Nunchuck is a little bit more muted than the, than the Ninja Force version, which is okay. I'm okay with that. Uh, you can see the mask kind of approximates what Nunchuck looks like, but not real well. I kind of like the vintage look a little bit more. I would have liked it if they could have maybe tooled up a new head, done something a little bit more creative with that. The other thing that bothers me is the sash. Uh, there's plenty of two-strap web gear selections out there that I think they could have gone with to be a little bit more accurate and a little bit more interesting. Uh, instead, we just got the kind of typical Storm Shadow sash and belt. Um, you know, Nunchuck, the vintage version, doesn't even wear that kind of martial arts style belt. So um, I would have liked to see something a little bit different there. But really, that's you know a pretty minor complaint. And uh, heaven knows, there's like I said, there's plenty of those two-strap web gear sets out there. It's easy enough to replace it on my own. But um, the, the thing I really love about these Ninja Force updates is that they're no longer saddled with those terrible action features that would reduce articulation to, a, you know, a, a terrible point. Um, I mean, his O-ring being broken is probably an advantage because you can take them apart here and see that you know, his, his little special power was that he had the spring-loaded arm that let him karate chop 
but he also had these little tabs underneath too, and so as a result, would not turn at the waist very well. So, you know, ninja figures that are supposed to be kind of the most flexible characters out there ended up being, you know, figures that couldn't move the way you wanted them to move. And thankfully, these modern renditions don't suffer that same fate. And Nunchuck, in fact, is very well articulated. He's got his double knees. Because he's one of those 30th anniversary era figures, he is extremely well sculpted. It's a, you know, an almost perfect balance of sculpt and articulation. He's really baggy, really nicely detailed, but he still has terrific range of motion. Arms that have these thick sleeves attached still move pretty well. He's got those spread fingers that I mentioned where she can use to hold a sigh. He doesn't have the rocker ankles, he just has the swivel ankles, which a lot of people are probably happy with. There's, there's a fair share of folks out there who really don't like the rocker ankles. They're okay. If they're done well, they're really great. If they're not done well, they're pretty terrible. You know, you either kind of, you, you love them or you hate them type of situation. I don't know where I, where I fall. I love them on Renegade Scarlet. I think they work great there, but you know, to each his own. You can hold his nunchucks like that. He's got the articulated wrists, like so many other figures of this era did, where one wrist goes, well, in this case, that wrist kind of goes out, back and forth like this. And this wrist goes up and down. It's kind of the, op the um, opposite of the way Laws was, where his left or his right wrist went up and down, and his left one went back and forth. Nunchuck is the other way around. You know, I'm a big fan of Ninja Force. I um, I remember back in the day, you know, being excited. You know, what really had me excited about Ninja Force back in the '90s was Scarlet finally had her ponytail. And I remember seeing some artwork somewhere showing Scarlet with a real ponytail for the first time. I was like, oh my god, that's that's awesome, fantastic. You know, she finally looks kind of like the cartoon. Um, and then when that figure was finally released with her, you know, T-crotch and, and birth and hips and all that stuff, it was like, are you kidding me? This is what we've got? So that was a disappointment, obviously, you know. And here we are 20 years later and we've got, you know, Scarlet with ponytails coming out our butts. But um, back in the day, that was a pretty big deal and it was kind of disappointing, you know, the result and what we got, and Ninja Force itself kind of suffered that same fate, but these newer versions obviously don't, aren't crammed with, with action features that hamper their posability, which is good, and, uh, but I, I will tell you now that I've got Nunchuck and Shebang, I really need, really need me some Dojo, for sure, uh, Dojo is a must-have, um, you know, we've got Storm Shadow, I love a Ninja Force Snake Eyes as well, and obviously, a, a correct version of Ninja Force Scarlet would be spectacular. Um, I'm kind of, I'm not holding my breath for that one just because the Collector's Club doesn't typically do really core characters like that. But if they did, you know, that would be really, really cool. Um, but, you know, it'd be nice if we could at least get a dojo. But time will tell. We'll see what happens. But until then, you know, I've got my Nunchuck, I've got my Chimang, um, I've got Storm Shadow, and I've got, I guess you could say I have... Into. So there's Nunchuck. Uh, if you like what you saw, please subscribe. Please uh, like the video. Or if you don't like what you saw, throw me some comments and let me know what was wrong. Uh, I'm happy to fix whatever I can fix. I'm pretty new to this stuff and hopefully more to come. Uh, this is Justin from GeneralsJoes.com. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for watching this review by Justin Bell of GeneralsJoes.com and What's on Joe Mind. And from myself, Chris McLeod, aka Diagnostic80 from The Full Force. If you've enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and let us know what you think on any of our numerous social networking platforms. Goodbye, and see you next time for another General's Review. I can see the whites of their beady little eyes.